Welcome back. This is Accounting 1. We are in Chapter 1. Today we're working on Section 3, How Transactions Change the Owner's Equity on the Accounting Equation. Yesterday we talked about how transactions were going to change assets and liabilities. Today we're discussing the owner's equity. So there's, we're going to first of all talk about revenue transactions. There's two different types of those. We're going to first of all receive cash from sales and then we're going to record a transaction that says that we sold services on account. Your first definition that you need to know is revenue. Revenue is very important for a business. This is an increase in the owner's equity resulting from the operation of a business. So anything that's a typical business transaction that, that is going to increase the owner's equity is called revenue. So basically sales. Anytime you sell something, that's revenue, that's making money. Okay, the other one is whenever we sell services on account. So we learned in the last section that we can buy things on account, which means we're going to take it now and pay for it later. We're going to allow our customers the same, the same thing. So this is a sale for which cash will be received at a later date. So we are a computer consulting firm, so we're going to go ahead and consult with them, fix their computer, whatever it is, and then they're, we're going to send them a bill at the end of the month, and then they're going to pay it. The accounting concept you need to know for this one is realization of revenue, which means that when revenue is recorded at the time the goods or services are sold. So you actually earn your revenue when you make your sale, not when you receive the cash. And that's something you need to know whenever you're working on your taxes for a business. You need to record the sale at the time you made the sale, not when you receive the cash. So we're going to go ahead and list our transactions. We're going to have transaction number six. Hope you guys have more room. I have written really big on this one. And transaction number seven. Put it all the way over here to the side. Okay. So I'm going to have to draw out my T accounts again. Um, I think I'm actually going to use another piece of paper so that we have more room to see. Um, just because I've been, I wrote so big there. So we're going to have our assets. Oops, make sure we're on the camera. Equals our liabilities plus our owner's equity. Okay. And the assets that we have been using, we have used cash. I'm going to go ahead and put in our new one, which is going to be an accounts receivable, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, and this one is for Oakdale School. We also still have our supplies and our prepaid insurance, which I'm just going to abbreviate prepaid insurance. Draw the line down the center. We're going to have our liabilities, which has been our accounts payable. And it was for Supply Depot. And we had Kim Park Capital. Okay. All right, so there's all of our accounts. We'll go ahead and write in our ending balances from the last transactions. Cash was 3,225. Oakdale School right now was zero. Supplies we had 775. Prepaid insurance was 1200. In our accounts payable for our supply depot, they we still owe them $200. And our capital is 5000. 
Okay. So that's what we left yesterday with. So today we're going to talk about our first transaction. So that's going to be this one. We're going to receive cash from sales. So if you remember, we're going to go through and see if we can find anything of value for our assets. Okay, that's going to be our cash. We're going to receive cash this time. So far, we paid it out unless our owner gave it to us. So that's cash. And then we're going to, we have revenue. So, and I was recording capital as purple, so I'm going to sales is always revenue. Just remember sales is revenue. And it was $295. So to come over here and record the transaction, we received cash, so will our cash go up or go down? Well, I hope if I receive cash that the amount of cash I have is going to go up. So I'm gonna put plus $295. Oakdale School, is that going to change at all? No. We received cash, nothing happened with Oakdale School, so we're gonna leave that as blank. No, we didn't do anything with supplies, didn't do anything with prepaid insurance. We didn't pay or charge anything to Supply Depot. So where do we record our revenue? Well, our revenue is part of our, is part of our capital account. So we're going to, for now, we're not going to make a new revenue account. We're just gonna list it under our capital. We'll change that in a couple chapters. So I'm going to put plus $295 because that's how much we received in sales. And in parentheses beside it, or under it in my case, I'm going to put revenue. So that we know where that $295 came from. Okay, we can draw our total line. And if I go down through here, my cash, I now have $3,520. Nothing for accounts receivable. Supplies stayed the same. Prepaid insurance stayed the same. Accounts payable stayed the same. But our revenue has finally changed. And now our business is worth $5,295. Okay? Okay, so now we're going to look at the second transaction, which is sold services on account. And this one says on August the 12th, we sold services on account to Oakdale School. So remember, if we're selling services on account, we're gonna go ahead and perform the service, but they're gonna pay us later. So, do we have an asset? Well, we don't have any cash being traded because they didn't pay us. But what we do have, remember I said on account is going to mean something? Well, because we sold, that's going to be a revenue. So I'm going to go ahead and circle the sold with my purple. And then it was on account, but this time because we're selling it, our on account is actually an asset. Okay, even though Oakdale School has not given us the money to record as an asset, they owe us money. So that's technically something of value that we own. Even though the cash is still in their pocket, it is technically our money. So that is our asset. So that's the way we're going to record this transaction. Okay, um, I might go up here and put, I'm just gonna put a six here and a seven here so that we know which transactions those two went to. Okay, so we sold services on account to Oakdale School which means that Oakdale School now owes us $350. So I'm going to increase accounts receivable because we want to receive their money from Oakdale School for $350. The only other thing that's going to change is because we sold something. So if we sell something, I said that word was the same basically as saying revenue. So we're going to come over here to our Kim Park Capital. We're going to increase that one by $350, and in parentheses, I'm gonna put revenue. Okay, we'll draw our line. I hope this is seeming, getting this piece pretty easy for you. Go ahead and do our math and bring down all of our numbers. Our cash did not change. Oakdale School for accounts receivable did change. It is now 350. Supplies is still the same. 
prepaid insurance still the same. Our accounts payable is still the same. But our capital did change. Okay. If I draw that line down here. So I want to go back through since and see, make sure that we are still good to go. So if I add these numbers all together, they're actually going to equal $5,845. If I add these numbers together, they're going to equal $5,845, which means my, my accounting equation is in balance and I can go to the next transaction. Remember I said you always want to double check this to make sure you stay in balance. Okay, the next kind of transaction we're going to be concerned with is an expense transaction. I'm sure you guys all know an expense. An expense is a decrease in owner's equity resulting from the operation of business. So go ahead and put your vocabulary word down. Okay, so a decrease in owner's equity resulting from operation of a business. So this is not any time a business is actually buying um, like inventory to sell or something or paying for supplies. Um, I know that sounds a little tricky right now, but just remember supplies is not a technical expense because we're actually buying something that's going to be of value to us. Um, a, right now an expense is going to be, a couple examples are like rent, because once you pay your rent, there's no way to get your rent back or your telephone bill. So these are typical operating expenses for a business and they are listed as an expense transaction. So we're gonna go ahead and record those. So we'll just draw out our accounting equation again. This time we're gonna need lots of room for different things. Okay, so I've went ahead and put on the two stickers for the transactions eight and transactions nine. And then I listed out our accounts, oops. as we left them at the end of the last transaction. So I brought those balances forward. A balance is what the total in an account is. So if I keep saying balance, that's the total in the account. So we've got those listed. The first transaction, we paid cash for rent. So was there anything of value there or an asset? There is, it's cash. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle that one. So is there anything else you see that's gonna be in this one? Okay, there's nothing here, but rent is going to be our expense. And we're at this point going to be recording all of our expenses also in the capital account. Later on, we're gonna make separate expense accounts, but right now we're just gonna put them all in with capital just like we did with revenue. So let's go ahead and figure this transaction. So did anything happen to cash? Yes, we paid cash. So whenever you pay cash, your cash is going to decrease. So I'm going to decrease by 300. Nothing with accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, accounts payable. But we did affect our capital account, and this time it's rent. And so we're going to list our rent. We're going to subtract by $300, and in parentheses, we're going to put expense. Okay? Because the value of our business just went down by $300 by paying our rent. We're gonna draw our line, figure all of our new balances. So now we have $3,220 worth of cash. These did not change. And then over here, we decreased by 300. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and do transaction number nine. I'm just gonna draw number nine here so we don't get confused. What is in this one? Paid cash for the telephone bill. Do we have an asset or anything of value? Well, I told you to always look for cash. So there's our cash, which is our asset. And what is our other thing we're dealing with right now? It's expenses. So a telephone bill is going to be an expense. So telephone bill, I'm putting it in purple. And we'll go ahead and just list these out. If I paid cash, is my cash going up? Or is my cash going down? Well, it'd be nice if it went up, but it goes down. So I'm going to subtract $40. And I'm going to come over here to my capital account because that's where we record our expenses. And is our ex capital account going up or going down? Is our business worth more money or less money since we paid the phone bill? It's worth less money. So I'm going to subtract $40 here and I'm going to put expense in parentheses. Okay. Time to figure our new balance. Okay, we just have, oh, make sure you can see what I got for mine. So we have all of these. And again, if we would add these, this side together and this side together, they are going to equal the same thing. So we only have one more type of transaction we're going to learn in this section, actually in this chapter. And it is an other type of transaction that deals with cash. Okay, so the first kind of a different an other cash transaction we're gonna have is whenever we receive cash on account. This is good. This is when our charge customer pays his bill. So our customer came, we had re fixed their computer, let's say, um, a couple weeks ago, then we mailed them a bill, and now they're paying their bill. So that's good, we're receiving their cash on account. Another kind of transaction that we have to record that deals with cash is whenever we pay cash to the owner for personal use. This is called a withdrawal. And it, the definition is assets taken out of the business for personal use. So if the owner needs some money to make, to pay their bit rent, remember we don't want to mix funds. That was the accounting concept of going concern. And so we are going to transfer money, give money, which is an asset, give cash to the owner so that they can use it however they want. And it may not necessarily be cash. It could be that they needed to, they need a package of pencils, so they took the package of pencils out of the supply closet. Whatever it is. Um, typically, it could be inventory. We're not dealing with inventory in this, with this business, but if we had inventory, maybe they took home some inventory. We would need to put that into our accounting equation and journalize and record that transaction, not just let them take it off the shelf and take it home or take cash out of the cash register. We have to record that information. So I've went ahead and I listed out, oops, I did not put the balances on there. Give me a second. Okay, these are the balances that we left the last transactions with. So I just brought those down here. So let's go ahead and record transaction number 10. So we need to analyze it and break it apart. Is there anything of value or any assets? We received cash on account. There's our cash again. Cash is gonna be in a lot of your transactions. So just start by looking for cash. And this time we received it, so that's gonna be an increase in cash. The next thing was it was on account from. So if we received it on account from Oakdale School, that means they're paying their bill and if they're paying their bill, what they owed us was an asset, and so that's still an asset, okay? So if we record that one, <clears throat> we received cash, so we received $200, so I'm gonna increase our cash by 200, and they paid their bill. They owed us 350, but they paid 200, so are we going to increase or decrease that? Well, Oakdale School hopes that we're going to decrease the amount that they owe us. 
and plus we need to keep our transaction in balance and there's nothing else on this side over here so these two items need to do the opposite thing. So we have an increase and a decrease on the same side of the transaction, they'll cancel each other out. So we draw our line, we do our math, increase our cash by 200, decrease the amount they owe us by 200, and nothing else is going to change. Okay, the next transaction says we paid cash to the owner for personal use. So there's our cash. This time we're paying it, so we know that we're going to this time be decreasing or subtracting it. And to the owner for personal use. So the owner, if it has to do with the owner, that's going to be our owner's equity or our capital account. So cash is going to decrease by $125. Then we're going to come over here to capital and the amount of capital or the value of our business or the, um, the value that Kim Park has in our business is going to decrease because she's taking out $125. So we'll go ahead, do the math for this one. Okay, oops, I need to put in parentheses here that this was a withdrawal so that we know where that money went to. Okay, and just because we are at the end of this section and this chapter, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our left side is going to be equal to our right side. So if we do the math, we should get 5,380 on the left and 5,380 on the right. If these do not equal after a transaction, you need to go back at that point, find where you made a mistake before you go on. It's a lot easier to find it as you're going. So I recommend that you always are making sure that these equal after every transaction or every two transactions. I wouldn't go any more than two or three because then you're going to have to look a lot longer to try and find your mistake. Okay, so you should have your definitions of revenue, sale on account, expense, and withdrawals in your notes. And be sure that you go ahead and answer the questions for audit your understanding. Put those in your notes and we will discuss the problems tomorrow.